Who here thinks that they will never have a trial for the rest of their lives? It's no one. In fact, it sounds funny to even say that. Trials will happen. But the trials I'm going to speak of today do not come from sin. The uh, Bible tells us that trials can come from time and chance. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, but time and chance happen to them all. We also get into trials if we make a mistake, and we've all made mistakes, or when we do something stupid, and unfortunately, we've all done something that we regretted doing more than once. But all of our trials have consequences, and this is the title of this sermonette, is Trial and Consequences. But what does God tell us in the Bible that he's going to do when we go through these kind of trials that aren't caused by sin, but by time and chance, or by our, our own actions. We will see that God guides us through our trials and also the consequences from those trials. But I was trying to think of a verse or Bible scripture that says what God is going to do when the trial comes from a mistake we did or just time and chance. And I looked and looked and then it hit me what was really obvious because it was the only psalm that I had ever memorized that they made me memorize in Sunday school when I was a kid. And it's one that you probably know and it's the first time where I didn't have to bring a Bible up to the podium because I'd memorized the verse. And it's the 23rd Psalm, if you haven't figured it out by now. And I'm going to go through verses 4 through 5, and then later on finish up with verse 6. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, that tells us this is not Disneyland. This is a real trial. The shadow of death is serious. So we got a serious trial. <coughs> Continuing on, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Well, that's saying specifically, okay, you got yourself into this. I'm going to be with you through it. Continuing, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Well, for a shepherd, the rod and the staff protect the flock as well as guide them. So God is telling us that as we go through this trial, he is going to guide us and he's going to protect us. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Well, now that's not the table we want to sit in. We would rather be with friends or brethren, relatives, well maybe not all the relatives, but some of the relatives, and not enemies, but there's going to be enemies. And they could be human enemies or they could be obstacles that you have to face. And what's God going to do? Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now, anointing your head with oil means when you're at the table with your enemies, you're going to have an extra amount of the Holy Spirit to get you through. And my cup runneth over means that when it gets really bad, you're going to have extra special amounts of the Holy Spirit. God's not going to abandon you in any way, but you're going to be able to make it through it. And the per perfect example of self-inflicted uh, trials is Joseph. So let's take a look at some of his self-inflicted trials and see how God intervened in each of these cases. The first one is when he's a teenager and he's bragging. And we know we were all teenagers at one time and we know that teenagers will brag and open their mouths and say things that they'll later regret. But he tells his brothers and his parents that they will all bow down before them because he had this dream and he's going to be more important than all of them. Well, of course, this doesn't sit real well. And, uh, there's consequences. You, you should never, ever, even when you're right, and he was right, but even when you're right, you should never rub someone's face in it. You should be, have, have a more friendly attitude, more humble attitude, and that 
the consequence of his opening his mouth when he shouldn't was that he ended up being a slave. He was sold into slavery. So what did God do about that? Well, obviously he was going to need the Holy Spirit to develop some humility because he didn't have it at that time. But the verse in the 23rd Psalm, thou art with me. Now, when a young, strong man is sold into slavery, very often they end up in the mines. If you are working in a mine you have, and you're young and strong, you have a life expectancy of three to four years. If you're older, you may make it to one. So end of story if he's sold into the mine. But God said, for thou, thou art with me. So he's going to be with him and he's going to guide and, do, and protect him. And so he ended up not in the mines where he should have ended up, but he ended up as essentially the chief financial officer for a very wealthy man in Egypt. So it was the, the best case scenario. So God honored what we, he would later quote in the, in the uh, psalm. He was with him and he guided and protected him. Trial number two, which wasn't Joseph's fault, but the rich Egyptian, Potiphar's wife, wanted to commit adultery with him. Now, in this case, Joseph did exactly what God would, would have wanted him to do and what the Bible tells us that we should all do. He refused to commit adultery. He honored, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then he got out of there as fast as he could, which is, but God tells us in the Bible, flee evil. He did that. He refused to commit adultery. He did not if he flee evil. He did flee evil. But what's the consequence? He did exactly what God said, but he ended up ending up in jail. He didn't do anything wrong. He just ended up in jail. That was just a consequence. Now, we've all had consequences when we sometimes followed God's law. For instance, how many of you here have lost their job because of keeping the Sabbath? My wife lost her job for keeping the feast. It happens. We did what God said, but there were consequences, and we didn't really like those consequences, but nonetheless, they, they happened. Well, just as in the first trial, we, we, we've often said things that we regretted that we said. You say, oh, why did I say that? And it had consequences. We may have lost a friend. We may have alienated someone. We may have hurt someone's feelings. We didn't mean it, but we did something. Well, back to Joseph, what happened here? Again, his rod and staff comforted him in the sense that he had the top job in the prison. He was basically the uh, uh, wardens, if you would call it that, the, the wardens top man to watch what was going on in the prison. So he was in a very good situation considering uh, where he was. But also, another part of the 23rd Psalm, anoint my head with oil, he was given an extra amount of the Holy Spirit so he had real power to interpret dreams. And he was given that for the next phase of his trial because while he was in, in prison, the butler and baker were put there. Now, when the butler and baker were put there, they each had dreams. He interpreted those dreams. And when the butler went back to serve the Pharaoh, the butler forgot that he had promised Joseph that he would speak well of him to, to Pharaoh. Well, we've all been in that situation. How many of you have helped someone and didn't even say thank you? How many of you have gone out of your way for someone else and no recognition at all, nothing? Uh, how many of you have sacrificed, helped people, maybe loaned people money and they never paid you back? loaned people equipment that never came back. I mean, we've all done that at one time or another. And he was forgotten, and it was a, there were consequences. So at that point, cup runneth over kind of comes in here because he's given it an extra amount of the Holy Spirit because at the right time, he's taken from the prison and meets Pharaoh and interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And now he becomes essentially the chief financial officer to Pharaoh in Egypt. So he ends up in very good 
circumstances. Again, we see the 23rd Psalm, how, how God is protecting him and being with him. There's also long-term consequences of, for some of the trials that we have. The classic example would be Joanadab, who couldn't in his wildest dreams realize the consequences of what he had done. Now, he had told his descendants, do not drink wine, don't live in a house, don't sow seed, don't plant a vineyard, but live in tents. Now, none of those things he said not to do were sins, but he told them not to do it. And they did it. They did exactly what he said. Now, we've probably all had teenage kids, and you told them something, it whizzed right in here, right out there, it's probably by the speed of light, beyond the speed of sound is how long it stayed in there. I mean, that, that's happened to all of us. But interestingly, his descendants, all of them, did what he said. And over 200 years later, God makes a remark on that, that I'm going to read it from Jeremiah 35, 19. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. Well, what does that mean? You know, it means that there are people in the church of God who are descended from Jonadab because of this promise, because forever means forever, and how do you stand, stand before God? You have to be in the church of God and be given God's Holy Spirit. So one of you or more of you might be descended from Jonadab. Maybe I am. We don't know. But we know God's promises always come through. And when he says, lack a man to stand me be, before me forever, that's what it means. There's no way that Jonadab could have known the consequences of that. Just like there's no way that we would know some of the consequences of our actions when we do things according to God's will and law. Now, going back to Joseph, for all the trials that Joseph had to deal with and all the consequences, God was with him as said in the 23rd Psalm. And it's the same for us. God will be with us just as he was with Joseph to get us through those trials. We must draw closer to God so we can obtain more of his Holy Spirit, so we can persevere no matter how bad the trial is. God will be with us. He will guide us and lead us and protect us through that trial according to his will. And finishing up on Psalm 23, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So as we grow through these trials, we will be supplemented by God's goodness and mercy. And ultimately, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever into the kingdom of God.